Hello, wrestling fans. Welcome to SICW All-Star Wrestling. I'm Drew Abenhouse here with the one, the only, Mr. Ron Powers. Ron, thanks for being here yet again. Hey, Drew, thanks for having me, buddy. Hey, Herb, thanks for having me. It's a real pleasure to be here at the SICW. Yes, sir, and we got a great episode for us and for the wrestling fans. Your main event will be the former tag team champions of the Night Train, Gary Jackson, teaming with Gil Rogers, taking on Devastation Incorporated, the team of Attila Khan and Peyton Ayers. Gil. We've got superstar Steve Fender, our current Central States champion, going one-on-one -on -one with the very popular Billy McNeil. The Uber Destroyer is back, and we will see him in action. Plus, the Top Guns, our brand new tag team champions, will be here today on All-Star Wrestling. But ladies and gentlemen, time to get to it. Let's head to the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, your opening contest on All-Star Wrestling is a tag team match. Set for one fall, 10-minute time limit. Introducing first from Turner, Kansas, weighing in combined at 452 pounds, Bobby Joe and Johnny Joe Black, the Wranglers. And their opponents from St. Louis, Missouri, weighing in at 464 pounds, they are your new reigning SICW Tag Team Champions, Brandon Beretta, Joe Vanetti, the Top Guns. <laughs> Referee Andy Anderson making sure those tag belts are safe. It's the calm before the storm, ladies and gentlemen. This will be a great tag team match. Both teams with a lot to prove and with a lot to potentially show. The bell has rung. All-star wrestling underway. Again, Ron, thanks for being here. Hey, it's great to be here, Drew. We are taking a look at our new tag team champions. This is the first time we've had a chance to take a look at the Top Guns since they won the tag titles from the LA Hustlers. So we'll see if that's made them more confident or if that's uh, done anything at all. Well, the last time I was here, they were a pretty hot tag team. They, they had all their timing down. They had the moves down. They got, Absolutely. They got the speed, the strength, the agility, and they could go far in this business. And they won the titles in a no DQ match, which they had to have to sort of uh, level the playing field against uh, the LA Hustlers and Lucky P. Larson. And what they proved is not only did they have all the attributes that you just said, but they also showed that they could get dirty and fight fire with fire. Well, that's what you gotta do sometime in this business. Yeah. Be, being nice doesn't really get you too far in the pro wrestling business. I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> no comment, I think you're pretty nice. You've always been good to me. Well, I'm nice now. I, uh, I appreciate it. But the Wranglers, they're a relatively new addition to the tag team roster here in SICW. Bobby Joe and Johnny Joe Black. We've seen the Wranglers in both singles competition and tag team competition. And either man, they're willing to wrestle anybody. Oh man, what a shoulder block. Brandon Beretta just running over Bobby Joe with that shoulder tackle, my God. But the, the Wranglers, they're, whether their opponents and the fans like or dislike, the Wranglers will step up and wrestle anyone. So you have to admire that. As long as it moves them up the ladder and gains them experience, their game. Well, when you're in this business, you got to be prepared to wrestle anybody, whether they're small or bigger. It doesn't matter. It could be two on one. I mean, you 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 got to keep your head on a swivel sometimes when you're at the top. And these guys will find out that uh, in time, uh, if they're if they, if they if they're still holding the title, that everybody's going to bring their A game when they come to face them. Absolutely. While this isn't a title match in and of itself, imagine how, what that would do to the rankings and how that would shake up the tag team roster if the Wranglers were able to get a win over the top guns. It's a non-title match, but you have to imagine that would earn them a title match. And what a crushing blow to the, I don't want to say the ego, but the growing confidence of the brand new tag champs. Well, they have you, a lot to lose, even though this isn't a tag title I'll tell match. You what, they got a lot of top quality tag teams here in the SICW. I mean, uh, way more than back when I was when I was in the uh, in the uh, on the roster. But uh, I'll tell you what, it seems like all these guys really uh, really know what they're doing. It seems like um, that that A School Academy is really paying off, and uh, I'm glad to see some of these guys getting an opportunity. 
Yes, sir. Couldn't say it any better than that. And most of the men, and here's what's important, are making the most. Look at that of the opportunity. Just almost doing an inverted push-up to crush the throat of Joe Vanetti in the middle rope there. Well, based on that was pack, innovative. It looks like the only thing he could bench press. Joe Vanetti fight, fighting back. He is one half of your tag champs, Joe Vanetti. What's interesting about the Top Guns, the first time they teamed up, it was, I don't want to say it was an accident, but it wasn't on purpose. Both of these men were scheduled for singles matches, and one of their opponents didn't show up. We had to reschedule the card a little bit, as fans know, as we all know. Asterix, card subject to change, right? So the first time they teamed up, it was impromptu. It was uh, on the spur of the moment, moment. And they turned that into what is now a tag team title run. Well, hey, Incredible. you find the best things when you're not looking for them, right? You bet. That's life. That's Oh, man, that's not just wrestling. That's life. Brandon Beretta dropping Bobby Joe twice with the clothesline, following up with a big splash. Bobby Joe reverses the Irish whip, charging up. Beretta out of the way. Full clip spine buster from the tag team champion. They're loading up the rocket launcher. The netty nails it, it is for one, the one, two, two, three. Tag team champions victorious on All-Star Wrestling. Not a good day for the anglers. Well, the wranglers, you're absolutely right. Tag team champs. They're on a roll, ladies and gentlemen. They are at the top of the SICW Tag Team Mountain. Brandon Veretta, Joe Vanetti, your tag team champs, your winners today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to head to ringside to get a few words from the leader of Devastation Incorporated, Stephen E. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with the leader of Devastation Incorporated, the merchant of violence himself, Stephen E., along with one of his newer finds, the man from Germany, the Uber destroyer, Stephen. It's been a busy couple of weeks. You have a lot going on. I have a lot going on. Let me explain something to you, Dr. Drew. I come here with a message, and it's not a good message. My investors, my foreign investors are upset because they're telling me that I am not showing the aggression that I need to show. And it shows. After what happened a couple of weeks back in Belleville, everybody saw it. Everybody knows that I am not getting a fair shake here at SICW. And Danny Boy Hawkins, Danny Boy Hawkins, you, my friend, need to keep your nose out of my business. Last week, you come in here and you prevented us from walking away with a victory, and that doesn't sit well with me. You understand that? I'm going to show you exactly what Devastation Incorporated is about, and that's about leaving you in a bloody trail. Now, with that said, I am very sick and tired of Herb Simmons ignoring he is ignoring my phone calls about the purchase of SICW, and that's not sitting well with me or my investors. We have already designed a new logo. We have designed a new logo for SICW. Instead of the red, white, and blue that has been there for 10, 15, 20 years, we are going to change the colors of that flag to Saudi green, white, and we're going to leave the red in there as a representation of Gary Jackson's blood on the flag. That's going to be changed, Dr. Drew. That's going to be changed. But what you're going to see from Devastation Inc. in the next couple of weeks is going to be aggression because that's what my investors want. They want to see what we're capable of doing, and I'm going to show them what we're capable of doing. That's why I went and procured the big man right here, the Uber Destroyer. You see what he's capable of doing. Everybody that sees him, they move to the side. They know what he's capable of doing. And if you get in my way, Danny Boy Hawkins, this might be somebody that you're going to have to contend with. Well, we're all going to see what he's capable of doing right now because Stephen E., Uber Destroyer, you're in the ring. Your match is next. Let's go to that now. Ladies and gentlemen, this matchup set for one fall with a 10-minute time limit. Introducing first from Effingham, Illinois, weighing 298 pounds, Richard Shaw. His opponent, accompanied to the ring by the merchant of violence, Stephen E., representing Devastation Incorporated from Germany, weighing in at 125 kilos, the Uber Destroyer.
These are two big men, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, 125 kilos is about 275 pounds. So Richard Shaw with about a 20 pound weight advantage over the Uber Destroyer, who is still a relative unknown here in SICW. He's only shown us a claw, basically. Oh, a claw, and he's under a mask. We don't know anything about him. But They uh, say he's from Germany. We don't know that. But I'll tell you what, uh, I don't really care for the comments this Steven guy is making. I don't, I don't really know what's going on around here, but yeah. you don't need to be talking like that and making threats about people that I care about. Ron, and, it's, uh, been, it's been happening for months, and yeah. thank goodness that someone like you is here to speak up about it. Yeah, I can kind of feel, I don't even know if this is where I should be at this point. I mean, I kind of start, I'm, I'm, my, my, my hair starting to stand up on my, ah. my arm here. Uh, I don't really care for this kind of display. I don't really care for uh, what he stands for, and I don't care for the idle threats. Well, that's kind of what Danny Boy said he came back for. He's seen yeah. the outside threats from Stephen E., from Lucky P. Larson, and Danny Boy says he's here to make sure that Herb is protected and that nothing weird happens with any transfer of power or potential sale to uh, the, the foreign investors. You know, the only thing I question, though, is this our fight anymore? I mean, we've been out of the wow. game for so long. Oh, Things man, big suplex. There's, there's still people here that uh, that if they choose to take care of business, they will. Um, I, I can kind of see things are starting to, uh, to happen on the negative side. That's, it's the claw. The Uber Destroyer with that claw that we've seen him use to great success in the past. Can he do it again? Andy Anderson, he's down. That's the one, the two, the three. Stephen E. and his new client, the Uber Destroyer, and he won't let go. This referee needs to get him to let yeah, go. Yeah, Andy, make him break the hold. This could cause permanent damage. The viciousness of Devastation Incorporated. He just follows the orders of Stephen E. in here. What? You said you didn't like the tone. This isn't going to be any this better. Right. He's been doing this, covering his fallen opponents with the flags of his investors. No, no this ain't right. This ain't right. Salt in the wounds. It's insult to injury. Constitutional rights. He's full of crap. What is this? In his, in his mind, it's some kind of freedom of speech. Oh, no, 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 no. You can do that to the roster. They're willing participants. How could you guys expect me to come out here and watch this crap and not do something well, about hey, it? You, I mean, I told I don't want to you, be around this anymore. This is disgusting. Dude. Disgusting. Nah. I, I know you're proud of me, Saudi, is what he said. I heard him. I can see the veins popping out in your forehead, Ron. I heard him. All right. Well, fans, Stephen E., Devastation Incorporated, Uber Destroyer using the claw to pick up a big win here today. Now, I have to uh, – actually, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We're going to let Ron calm down a little bit. Yeah. And uh, we will be right back with words from our uh, – pardon, our Central States champion, oh, superstar Steve Fender. Don't, don't go I'll any – I'll shove that flag up your ass. Don't – don't go, don't go anywhere. Can you see me? Can you see me? It doesn't matter if they can see you. Get out of here. Get, get, wait a minute. Get, can you, can you see me now? You can't, you, you know, you can't see me. Now you can see me. Thank you, sir. Hello, everyone. This is Bill Apter down here in Apter's Alley. 2015 inductee into the St. Louis Hall of Fame. Thank you to everyone who inducted me, Herb Simmons and the rest of the crew. SICW, sensational, incredible championship wrestling, also stands for Southern Illinois Championship Wrestling. And all roads on May 17th, 2024, and May 18th, 2024, are headed to the big city of the Big Dome. And this is Fan Fest number two. I couldn't be at number one, but I'm going to be there for sure. And on the 17th, on that night, I'm doing my one-man show. Now, what's the one-man show all about? Is it going to be these, um, like, heavy Q&As, talking about the business? And that? No. No, this is like a 
a variety show. There'll be trivia, there'll be music, there'll be contests. You've never had so much fun in your entire pro wrestling life. I can assure you of that. Then, on Saturday, all day long will be this incredible fan fest. You'll be meeting some of the legends of the pro wrestling world, dozens and dozens of legends of the pro wrestling world. Saturday night, there'll be an incredible wrestling show. So it's a weekend that you must be at, especially for my show on the night of the 17th. It's Friday night, so come on, out, out and party. Um, SICW.org for full information. I can't wait to see your face in the place. And uh, this is Bill Apter, St. Louis Wrestling Hall of Famer, if you will. I'll see you in St. Louis, Louis, and you, you too, Barbara and Pam and Darla and Herb and uh, Mike and Ed and Frankie and Alan and... Wrestling fans, you looking for the best in daily lunch specials and great menu food items? Look no further than Layla's Roadhouse, 440 Falling Springs Road in Cahokia Heights, Illinois. That's right, a family sit-down dining and always great specials. Also has the best pizza in the area. Wrestling fans, one of SICW's newest sponsors for FanFest 2 is KC Insurance. For all your insurance needs, look to KC Insurance. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and I am here with our reigning Central States champion, the superstar, Steve Fender. Steve. What? You asked me to come out here for this promo. Fair enough. You retained your title, of course, getting yourself deliberately dis disqual disqualified, pardon, against Bobby D. Bobby D was victorious recently whoa, 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 in Belleville. However, whoa, 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 whoa. first things first, I am... I am the Central States Heavyweight Champion. By default, I should be the number one contender for Greg Anthony's AIWF World Title. World Title. National Title is the number one contender for the World Title. Why am I not being accepted for this challenge? He's ducking me. He is ducking me because he's scared of me. So let me tell you what my new plan is. Greg Anthony, you can run and you can hide, but I'm just going to go ahead and challenge, uh, hi not Hype Gotti, Lou, Lou Gotti, Lou Gotti, the AIWF champ have champion. national champion, national champion. I don't care what he is. He's going to be a loser when he faces me. And when it happens, when it happens, not if it happens, when it happens, I will be a two-time champion, Mr. Drew. A two-time champion. At that point, Greg Anthony cannot duck me. I will be the one that is number one contender for the AIWF World Heavyweight Belt. Well, you've got that opportunity Saturday in Belleville, March the 2nd. We're just days away. You will receive that shot against the national champion in Lugati. What can he expect and what are you expecting out of that match it just days away? What can he expect? For you to lose. He knows I am the Central States heavyweight champion. If he expects me to come with anything less than my A game, boy, is he in for a surprise because that's what I'm bringing. I'm bringing my A game because my goal is to be a two-time champion so that I can move on to be the number one contender for the AIWF world title. Greg Anthony, I'm coming for you, buddy. I don't care how much you duck me. I'm coming for you. Well, first, this Saturday, you have to beat Lou Gotti to get there. Let me tell you something else. A couple weeks ago, Herb Simmons thought he was going to be cute and find me $1,000. He did. Herb Simmons, find me $1,000. Let's, let's just state it like you think it needs to be stated. Herb Simmons, $1,000 is a drop in the bucket for me once I become the AIWF World Heavyweight Champion. With the champion's share of the prize money, it's a drop in the bucket. I'm going to be paying $2,000 for haircuts. I don't care about $1,000 fine. We'll both get a haircut with that money. 
Drew, you're not funny. These fans, they're not funny either. All they need to know is Superstar Steve is your Central States Heavyweight Champion. And the next time we see him, he very well may be the national champion of the AIWF to claim his stake for uh, the one and only World Heavyweight Champion. So, but you have a match actually right now. You're taking on Billy McNeil next. So let's, let's do that. I hope Billy brought his A game because I'm going to wipe the mat with him. Steve Fender and Billy McNeil coming up right now, ladies and gentlemen, but I did forget to mention one thing. Due to the actions of Stephen E. that we just saw in the last match attacking the referee, Herb Simmons has barred Stephen E. from our TV main event. Attila Khan, Peyton Ayers have to go into tag team action. Stephen E. will not be allowed at ringside. But now, fans, let's head to the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, this matchup set for one fall, 10 minute time limit. Introducing first from Springfield, weighing in at 202 pounds, Billy McNeil. <laughs> His opponent from Hollywood, California, at 229 pounds, he is the reigning SICW Central States Champion, Superstar Steve Fender. Soon to be your next AIWF World Heavyweight Champion and National Heavyweight Champion. Well, yeah, he's got to get ahead of the national champ, Luke Gotti. He's got his opportunity this Saturday, March the 2nd, in Belleville, Illinois, at the Belclair Fairgrounds. But you have to admit, if he can somehow claim the national title from Lou Gotti, you would have to think that he would in fact be maybe not number one in line, but he would be uh, moved highly up the ladder one in line. to the world be title. automatic number one contender. Meanwhile, Billy McNeil here is pulling Steve Fender's hair all over the place to hold oh, on to Oh, nicely that done. Steve Fender was looking to get rid of Billy McNeil. Yeah, but he from keeps pulling side. his That's hair. Not. He did not. As I mentioned to Steve, yeah, we'll get a haircut from the same guy. Meanwhile, you, you can join us. Bald ding, not bald. How many times Mr. do I have Balding. to tell you that? From Saved by the Bell? Mr. No, that's Balding? Balding. Oh. Balding, Belding. Goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. Obviously, it's a good thing I came back to this commentary table. Billy McNeil staying one step ahead of the superstar so far. Because without me here, you're just useless. Without you here, it's calm, it's peaceful. Like I said, useless. Well... But now I'm back. I had I had media engagements. Sorry, fans. He's back. As yeah, and I'm sorry, fans, for his front. Yeah, they had to bust out the Excedrin. Lucky's back. Mm -hmm. Lucky. Er, look at that. Pardon Billy getting out of those head scissors. Well, uh, maybe not quite. You were saying? I don't know. Sometimes. Yeah, obviously, you don't know what you're saying most of the time. There you go. To quote a very wise man, I am so intelligent, I don't even know what I'm saying half the time. Uh -huh. That sounds like something Bobby Heenan would have said. Billy McNeil has to use the speed against the superstar who I know would love to ground Billy McNeil and to slow this down and get it to the mat. Well, of course he would. Billy McNeil oh. is known for his aerial well, moves. But sometimes, man, when people use high-risk tactics, you have to let them do it. High-risk is also to yourself sometimes, as we just that's saw. That's why it's called high-risk, you stupid that's, moron. That's what I was just saying. Now, I will say this. You know what other way there is? Oh, shin-breaker on Billy. You know what other way there is to slow down a high-flyer like Billy McNeil? You know what that would be? Tie his tassels to the ropes. I don't know where you ever come up with such ideas. Ha. Huh. I'm ashamed of you. I get those ideas through osmosis from my commentary partner. Ah. Oh, you saw that coming big chop to the chest of the very well, popular I heard it. Billy McNeil. There you go. Look at that. Go up, go down. Go up, yep. go down. That will keep him down. That will ground him for darn sure. Uh oh, I smell enziguri. No! No, because Steve smelled it too. Or maybe that's Billy McNeil not taking a shower. I don't know. Too much. You mean he's gone too long without taking one? Superstar Steve Fender admiring his work here as Billy McNeil laying prone on the mat. You know, I think that's actually Billy McNeil's real hair color. What is that, blue? Gray? That's, so, that's up for interpretation. Salt and pepper. Uh-huh. 
It's an interesting blend. Yes. That's a very tight submission hold. Yes, it is. That's that one of those leg locks that the great Harley Race himself passed down to superstar Steve Fender. In his will, in fact. I don't know that that's not Ooh, true. Ooh, nice leg whip. Yeah, oh, my God. Yeah, look at that. That'll dislocate a kneecap. That'll cause all sorts so of will kicking his knee like that. ligament tears. Medial meniscus, arterial lateral colligaments. ACL, MCL. That's it. Thank you. You know, no problem. Superstar. He's like a cat with a mouse. He's got his prey right where he wants him. Well, Billy kind of looks like a mouse. Billy Meal fighting back. Yeah, he's a one legged man. He's a oh. one legged man at a butt kicking contest. That usually does not bode well for them. Well, as we see now, he's. Grounded, as they say. There you go. Yeah, that left knee, just a bullseye on it. Let's see him fly superstar. around the ring now. Just give up. Fight another day. One, two, five. Nope. Billy McNeil kicking out at two. You got to do a little more than that to keep Billy McNeil down for the count. And Steve Fender knows that. There was a very high-profile match several years ago in SICW. Maybe Billy McNeil's highest-profile singles match. Oh, he got out of that one. It was a title match against superstar Steve Fender. Billy pushed the, uh, the superstar to his limits. Which is, which is your speaking way of saying he didn't win. He didn't win. Of course not. You can push anybody but it showed you want the to their limits. That Billy McNeil could exist on a level that maybe some people weren't too sure about. Yeah, but still not the same level as Superstar Steve. I mean, I push you to your limits, but you still can't get to my limit. Because there's my a, level is so far above you. There's a lot of, lot of responses there. Uh, yep. That was a nice we'll, chop block. Yeah, we'll get back to the action. Billy McNeil, nicely done. Yes, Unpredictable as always. Oh, nice. Almost shocked the superstar with a quick roll-up for hey, the look, three. Nobody is discounting Billy McNeil. He's got talent. He's just stupid. Absolutely not. Oh, well, he did See? just leap right See? into the waiting arms it's of, the he heard me. of the Central States champion. It's as if he heard me. Billy McNeil slid out of the back. Nice roll-up. Oh, thought he almost had it. See, this is a non-title. No, this is. If he had held the tights, he would have had him. Now you say he does that all the time. So he didn't there. Well, all right. And superstar right back. Oh, here it is. World's greatest death lock here. I predict he's going to tap out. Yeah, superstar had it locked up. Yep. Billy McNeil had nowhere to go. Superstar had been working on that That's knee the exactly entire match, right. leading to weird. what you just saw, ladies and gentlemen. It's moves like that, tactics like That's that, that right. show just why Superstar Steve is the Central States champion. And he is smart, see? I said it, Billy McNeil's stupid. Superstar That's, Steve he's is smart. Brave and he, no. Oh good, brave, all he right. can be brave all You're he done. likes. You're done, Superstar Steve is your winner. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna head to this week's Promoter's Corner. Let's see what Herb Simmons has in store for us this week. Wrestling fans, what a treat. I had a scheduled interview with Danny Boy Hawkins, but it's Danny Boy and Ron Powers. So, Danny Boy, we'll start with you. Of course, welcome back to SICW. You've made your presence felt in a multitude of ways recently. What are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are this. <laughs> There's been a dark cloud here in SICW. And the way I see it, this dark cloud is Stephen E. Now, Stephen E., you can come in and you can do all your threats, say, say everything that you want. You can threaten Herb Simmons. I'm here for one reason. That's to keep you out and to keep this deal from happening. Yeah. Ron, you've had many thoughts since you've come back. You're a conflicted man. I know you're trying to stay out of all of this, but seeing Danny get involved, watching what Stephen E. just did, not only attacking the referee, but burying opponents in foreign flags. It's waking up something that I think you wanted to let sleep. You know, there's a lot of things that I reflect upon, and I've been reflected upon in the last couple of months watching some of these shows. And it just seems to me like, um, like Danny, like you know, I, I don't, I don't really know if this, this is us anymore. That's that's my only concern, man. I mean, you know. We did this stuff 10, 15 years ago. 
um, you know, we both knew, you know, we both knew back when we started that the cardinal rule, the unspoken rule is family was always first. And everything I did was for my family. And everything, everything you did was for your family. But as we got older and we looked around, our age became, or I guess what you could say is our age kind of helped us gain wisdom in life. And my thing is, the days of the cameras being on us, the lights, the fans coming up to you at the malls asking you for autographs, I mean, those, those days are over. And, I, you know, I, I miss them. Don't get me wrong, I do miss them. But, you know, your family is your constant thing that you strive for and you try to make happy every day. And I found out that whether you walk away from this business, whether you limp away from this business, or whether you're pushed away in a wheelchair in this business, that you always have your family to go to. They're the ones that fix you up. They're the ones that prop you up. They're the ones that pump your ego up and push you back out that door so we could come out here and do what we did. But the key word is did. Um, this, this, I, 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 I love being around here. I mean, it really, I mean, just what happened earlier today made, made, the, made the hair on my arm stand up. And I just don't, no, 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 no. I mean, but the thing is, that's, that's something that I keep buried down deep inside me. I can't let it come out. And I know it was down inside you, and you don't want it coming out too, but I'm starting to see little things trickle from you, Dan, as far as, like, your old attitude. And, 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 and Herb, I feel sorry for the situation you're in here. I really do. I mean, I, I, I know these guys are coming at you, that, that, that Steven guy with, with all his money and the, and, the, and the Arab crap. I mean, I just I see it coming, coming down on you. Hey. Hey, let me, let, me, let me tell you something about this, people. This isn't just a TV show. I mean, this is something serious. This is, this is going in a, in a bad direction. And it's something that, that kind of scares me. It scares me for you. It scares me for Herb. It scares me for Dan. It scares me for Gary. I feel like these guys are going to speak up and things are going to happen to them. I, think, I feel like things are starting to get a little out of hand. And, Dan, I just I don't, know, I don't know if this is the path that we should be going down. I love you. You're, 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 you're my daughter's godfather. You, you know, your family to me, and I just don't want to see you get hurt. Brother, you and I <clears throat> have been down the road. We've gone through thick and thin, and we, yes, yes, we did. We did say, okay, when we're done with this, we're done with this. But this is a different circumstance. Do you remember the phone call in 2010 from Herb Simmons? And God rest his soul, our mentor, Larry Matisic. I understand the words that you're saying, and I love you dearly, and you know I would go through the fire with you. And we've been there. We've done that. And the family, yes, I understand the family that you're talking about. My family's the most important thing to me in my life. But you and I both know. We have a family outside our family, and that's right here. Now, when it comes right down to it, this is not just a, a, a match. This is not a circumstance that, that, that is just, okay, it's just wrestling, and this is just the way it goes. This is us against them. You and I were on the ground floor when this thing started. From that phone call from Larry and Herb. Hey, guys, we got this idea. We got this vision. And look where it's at today. I am not going to let this happen. I am not going to let that slime come in here and try and buy or take over what we started. It's not going to happen. You know, Dan, I sit here and I think it's not our fight, but I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe it's something I need to think about. Ladies and gentlemen, heartfelt conversation here between the first and the second classic wrestling champion. You heard it. These are the foundation of SICW. Yeah. Who knows what's next? Maybe uh, 
Maybe you've convinced Ron of something that nobody else has been able to. Fans, stay tuned to uh, All-Star Wrestling to see where this goes. Right now, Big Texan mentioned reaching out to a former competitor, Bull Bronson. I'm told Bull Bronson has sent us in a message. We're going to take a look at that now. SICW, Belleville, Illinois. Do you feel the excitement? Do you feel it because I feel it? Big Bull Bronson, the Mid-South Monster, is making his return to SICW. And I'm coming to get the back of the Big Texan. We're going to take a telecon and his goons, and we're going to send them back in. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was this week's Promoter's Corner. It's now time for a commercial break. We will be right back. Back by popular demand, it's the SICW Fan Fest 2, May 17th and 18th in St. Louis. Get your tickets now. Get your tickets now. See the stars of professional wrestling from today and yesterday. Hall of Famers and the next generation of superstars. More names to be announced soon. Get your tickets now. SICW.org. That's SICW.org. I am, yeah. The only psycho here is me. You will be coming. Awesome. I can't wait, man. I probably enjoy watching you guys. That's what's really coming. Uh, we're going to overwhelm each other, so. I got a question. Belong? Those belts were around their waist. Watch you. Hold on. Let me speak. Finally, we've been waiting for you to come. I miss you. All right, now just announced by Mr. Joel Maximo. What else we got? Lucas wants a new belt. Whoa. Uh, I wish I could. Uh, <laughs> what is it, Vic? That's the real Corey Snapchat. No, Snapchat. Right, all right. Welcome to But today I got a very special guest. Um, if you don't know who I am, I will never follow Papa Dank on Twitter. That have been my favorite wrestlers, and it's like the first time. Wrestling fans, there's nothing better than barbecue and wrestling. When you're hungry, stop by Mr. Barbecue with two locations to serve you in Columbia and Waterloo, Illinois. Great barbecue, cold beverages, and SICW wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with the night train, Gary Jackson, and the new reigning SICW classic, pardon, tag team champions, Guys, it's been a heck of a ride. Congratulations. You have jumped many hurdles. Lucky P. Larson, the L.A. Hustlers, threw everything they could at you, and um, this is the results. Now we're here, Drew. Everything that the Top Guns have had to deal with over the past year paid off. February 9th at the Belclair Fairgrounds, Joey and I walked out your new SICW Tag Team Champions. Man, it was... I still can't believe this happened. It doesn't even feel real. No. It was a surreal moment. Yeah, if, it, if it wasn't for the fans, for the support, we, we wouldn't, wouldn't have done here. this. We wouldn't be here. Yeah. Gary, you've watched these young men turn from trainees on their first day to standing here as champions. What are your thoughts on the rise of the Top Guns? First of all, I would like to say congratulations to the new SICW yeah. Tag Team Champions. What we have here is two great young men who's going to represent SICW the best way possible. Also, 
I'd like to thank the great fans who came out last Friday night at the Belleville Class Center. Without those fans, this wouldn't have been possible. Without Herb Simmons, this would not have been possible. Ladies and gentlemen, get on the bandwagon of SICW because we're going places. If you don't have a ride, call on the night train and I will come pick you up. Well, Gary, you also had a great day that night in Belleville picking up a win over what's been a thorn in your side for a long time, the Canadian hero, Sean Vincent. Well, you know, the Canadian hero, Sean Vincent, you know, he, he's a scrappy character, but I'm always thinking two steps ahead of every one step that he makes. Sean Vincent and anybody else in that back room, Stevie E, you and your boys, I keep telling you, you better listen. We are getting the band back together. These two guys right here, they're part of the band that we're getting together. We good. But uh, I just want to say thank, thanks again for the fans who came out for Belleville and everything. And, and uh, SICW Tag Team Champions, good luck. Your work has just started. Oh, Gary, come back. Come back, come back. Speaking of good luck, you might need it. You're teaming up with a former tag team uh, champion partner of yours, Gil Rogers, to take on Attila Khan and Peyton Ayers in our main event tonight. Herb Simmons has barred Stephen E. from ringside. Is that going to be in your favor? Or is are you getting ready to face an Attila Khan and a Peyton Ayers who are uncontrollable? You know something? Me and my partner right there, Mr. Gil Rogers, we don't care who they put in front of us because we know we got a job to do. We don't make excuses. We get out there and we take care of business. If Stephen E is there, fine. If he's not there, fine too. But we're going to take business, take care of business. That is why I got to get back so we can go over the small little details. All aboard the night train. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the night train. And thank you very much to our new tag team champions, Brandon Beretta, Joe Vanetti. Congratulations, guys. Thanks for coming out. Fans, we got to take our final commercial break of the night when we return. It is the night train, Gary Jackson and Gil Rogers taking on Devastation Incorporated. This is your host, Huge Pop, for the Huge Pop Wrestling Podcast, and riding with me is... Oh, you didn't know? Yo ass better call somebody! It's me, it's me, it's that M-A-double-T, and hey, we're here. The vendors are lining up for FanFest 2. On Saturday, May 18th, we're happy to welcome the Nebraska Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame as one of our newest sponsors. Ladies and gentlemen, your TV main event is a tag team match set for one fall. TV time remaining. First, from uh, Mongolia, pardon, representing Devastation Incorporated, Attila Khan. His tag team partner is from Cairo, Egypt, Peyton Ayers. 
Their opponents, combined weight of 431 pounds. First from Petticoat Junction, he is the night train, Gary Jackson. His tag team partner from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Gil Rogers. Yeah. Referee Denny Thomas making sure things are ready to go. Now, I, I hesitated when I started to announce the match because I was going to say accompanied to the ring by Stephen E. And then I realized Stephen E. isn't here. Yeah, horrible. Yet another injustice done to my good friend. But I will say this. He knocked out a referee. Well, the referee deserved it. He did not. Yes, he did. I'll say this. I'm very glad this match is starting. Why is that? Because I don't have to listen to those two lucky ingrate twits. The squirt gun, cap gun losers, the luckiest tag team on God's green earth crow about winning, stealing, taking my tag team titles. All right. The night train has the left arm of Peyton Ayers neutralized as Gil Rogers to the second rope. Nice elbow right to the elbow. Who do you think, which team has a weight advantage in this one, Drew? Well, it's the heavier team. Of course, Devastation Incorporated there at about 602 pounds combined. Their opponents about 431. I think However, you could add the referee to the team of night train and Gil Rogers, and Attil and Peyton Ayers would still have... The, uh, way to do I don't know, Denny, Denny's probably got 200 pounds on him. Right, well, they that, have more that, than a 200 pound advantage. No, that would be more. A anyway, had a big lunch. There you go. Oh, man, Peyton Ayers sent right in to Attila Khan. Hopefully, you would maybe without, without Stephen E. here to control the Mongolian say, and Peyton Herb, Ayers. I think Herb Simmons probably shot himself in the proverbial foot here. Can these two exist on the same page without the common theme of Stephen E? Well, they can, they another, even, can they even talk to each other? How can they communicate? They have another common theme. The common theme is destroy Gil Rogers and the derailed train over there. Gil Rogers and Gary Jackson, of course, it was almost we had a series of i don't want to call them forgotten tag team title reigns but they were very short as soon as um gil rogers and gary got the titles oh man attila khan sending the night train right down gil rogers of course an injury derailed that then uh, yes and who won those titles when they got put up in a tournament of all the sicw tag teams who was it it was me 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 well, that's true. Was that Kowalski and, uh, and Mahler McDarby? McDarby. Yes, right. indeed. I was the boss and the brains behind it all. Well. Don't you forget that. I'm always thinking. Well, and I got to ask you, we've seen him pop up every now and again. What's the status of the professionals? What's Mahler McDarby doing now? Whatever I he was, instructed yeah, him He was do. still working with you guys, and uh, I know last time we saw him, he gave... Joe Helms a pretty stiff warning that That's was right. unheeded. Yes, and so little Joe did not heed the warning, and the last two times he has wrestled Kowalski, Kowalski pinned him. Fact or fiction? I don't recall. You don't recall? I don't have my notes. Yeah. Fans, that is Dr. Drew's weaselly, cowardly way of saying, you're right again, Lucky. I don't know what you mean. Gary Jackson tagging Gil Rogers into the ring. Gil working on the left arm of Peyton Ayers, who is improving by leaps and bounds every time we see him. He's getting more confidence, and as he continues to gain experience, Peyton Ayers grows more dangerous. And there's one other change he's made, which has also been a tremendous help. You're obsessed with his gear. Hey, I didn't say it. You're the one that said that. What were you referring to? Maybe I was referring to the fact that he's studying more tape. Oh, wow. I was referring to the fact that he's changed his diet. Big fall away slam onto the night train. Well, may, maybe he changed his diet to add some protein. I think he's gained about 10 pounds in recent months. Yeah, maybe he's working out more and getting more muscle. Well, a well, lot of the... You want to focus on his tights. A lot That's of, fine. Yeah. You want to focus on the man's clothing. You do that. These fans know better than that. I do not envy Denny Thomas for his task here yeah, if he's not careful, Attila will beat him like his dad should have. Uncalled for. 
Attila Khan working on the night train. These are two former classic wrestling champions going toe to toe. And this oh, yeah. is nice. Joe Rogers telling Gary Jackson to reach nice. for the tag when he's all the way in the other corner. What does he think? He's plastic man? Stretch Armstrong. Miss, Mr. Fantastic. Yes. Elongated man. Hey, that was next, yes. yes. Maybe Peyton Ayers will beat this ref like his daddy should have. Does he even know who his dad is? I have not gotten into it with him. Do you it's, know who yours it's is? It's never come up. Do you know who yours is? Yes. He's, not, he's a good guy. Let me guess. Mr. Abbott House. That's him. Yeah. Attila Khan in the ring. Gil Rogers in the ring. These are the two. Oh, yeah. Good Fresh luck. man. Good luck. Drop on these kick two men. to Attila Khan. Drop kick to Peyton Ayers. Oh, no. Yep. It's there a th one. Oh, drop kicks. Thrust to the throat. Oh, no. And Khan just chucks Gil Rogers from not. the inside Gil over Rod the top rope Gil into Rogers. the outside oh, of the ring. Ladies on. and gentlemen, that is an automatic disqualification. Here in SICW. Uh, Gil Rogers tried to escape a Tilicon and jumped It's over the, the big top Texan. Rope. The big Texan. He's been fighting this war against Khan and Ayers. This is none of his business. A little bit of a preview just days away from Belleville, Illinois. It will be a Tilicon and the returning Bull Bronson taking on Khan and Peyton Ayers. Just days away in Belleville, Illinois, Saturday, March the 2nd. This is none of his business. They Absolute should be chaos. Time. Gary Jackson standing tall. Technically, Gil Rogers and Gary Jackson are your winners via disqualification. You look like a winner to me. Yeah, now he's ready to fight when there's nobody to fight oh, him. Oh, man, Attila Khan, the trusty fork, evening the odds, sends Texan... I think he's got Texan vulnerable. Here's Gary and Gil. Yeah. They're ready Two to go. One. Look Two at Khan. One. They're he's real brave when he's they got assessing his circumstances, assessing the situation, choosing yeah. discretion. Better part of valor. Well, ladies he and gentlemen, care about these guys. Gary Jackson and Gil Rogers are victorious via disqualification in your All-Star Wrestling main event. Join us six days from now, Saturday, March the 2nd, Belclair Fairgrounds, Belleville, Illinois. Be Bull Bronson returns to team with the Big Texan to take on Attila Khan and Peyton Ayers. And Joe Gotti will be here representing the AIWF, defending the national championship against superstar Steve Fender. Yeah, but that's we want our rematch. That's this Saturday. Belclair Fairgrounds. Ladies and gentlemen, we're out of time for today. For Lucky P. Larson, for Ron Powers, I'm Drew Abenhouse. This is All-Star Wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you right here next week. Have a good night.